Jerusalem was in a state of uproar following the sensational arrest of controversial figurehead Jesus of Nazareth. Outrage turned to anger as news of Jesus' arrest spread. Crowds took to the streets in his support, though some were calling for his head. Police seemed unprepared as the protests turned violent, with competing calls for Jesus' release and for Jesus' execution. The government was taken by surprise, there's no question of that. But the rumour later that I was brought in especially to settle the crisis, well, the truth was I was already there. As much as I disliked going to Jerusalem, I was always there at that time of year. Government House is actually down on the coast, it's 100 kilometres away. But Ponty always liked to supervise things personally, so he always made us go every year. The astonishing thing is I had never even heard of the guy at that stage. Funny to think of that now. The accused came to the attention of police in Jerusalem almost immediately. Now, this was a person who was enjoying unparalleled notoriety and popularity amongst the community, but had managed to uh, upset the establishment immediately. The guy had to go, uh, simple as that. And so we determined as a party that uh, this man could potentially lead our country into a very dangerous revolution. He had to be silenced, absolutely. And if the government wasn't going to do anything about it, then we certainly would. While the opposition were all set for a political stoush over the issue, it played to their core constituents. Uh, they thought they could get a few low blows into the government. Of course, uh, the media had a field day caused uproar in state parliament today. Question time descended into farce. This guy is a bit of a troublemaker, but nothing serious. Nothing to warrant the attention of this parliament. I mean, what crime has he committed? Have you listened to what he's been encouraging his supporters to do? Mr Speaker, this man is, is essentially trying to create a new society, a new order. And the government of the day is, is sitting on the sidelines on this issue, when clearly this, this, this matter goes to the very heart of our constitution and our society. Our society demands that you take action against this man. Peace starts with us. Well, the mood on the street was still very tense. Uh, the political bickering was uh, fueling the issue and keeping it in the public spotlight. Uh, unfortunately, this is often the situation in these high-profile cases. Yeah, well, I've seen this before, where a protest can spiral out of control. In order to quell the unrest, I was prepared to undertake a special judicial hearing. I mean, look, yes, I admit it. I, I, I did push for the case to be heard um, in an emergency, uh, you know, out of our sitting. And because of that, obviously, I wasn't perhaps as prepared as I would have liked to be. And, you know, I regret that now a bit. But the bottom line is time is critical. You know, time was of the essence. And as far as I'm concerned, better to stop this one man now than to have him go on and poison the whole of our society. The prosecution's case was a shambles. Most of the witnesses they brought forward gave conflicting evidence. The accused had no legal representation and wouldn't, in fact, defend himself. He wouldn't answer any of my questions, even though the charges brought against him carried the death penalty. In the middle of all this, my wife sends me a text message. I've still got it on my phone. See? I've had one of my dreams. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. I'm a very spiritual person. I mean, I always have been. I'm very attuned that way. And from time to time, I have these dreams or premonitions, and they always come true. So, I, you know, I've learned to really respect them. Well, it's not the way the government works, is it? Uh, what faith would the people have in the judicial process if we were to act on a dream or last night's dodgy pizza or something? Well, it seemed to me they were trumped up charges. And because the accused didn't defend himself, I had no choice but to hand down a guilty verdict. I mean, I was inclined to be lenient, but I knew that would uh, unleash a furor. So the expedient thing to do was to hand down the maximum sentence. So I signed the execution order for Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> 